What's up, everybody? Danny from Cage Inc. I'm at the Culture Exchange Art Gallery. Have you seen the painting right behind me? This place is located in Fashion Square Mall. The painting is by Eric Wise, aka the Wise Knight. Speaking of the Wise Knight, we're going to interview him right here. And here he goes. How you doing, man? How's it going, man? How are you? Good. We're both Batman fans, and oh, always. you know. Yep. Now, tell me about what got you into art painting and everything. Uh, well, art in general. My father, my father Thomas Wise. Oh wow. My father um was an ambidextrous artist. He could draw with either hand. He actually the the day that I got the bug, he sat me on his lap, and there was a a, a noose station that had the mayor on and at oh. the time the mayor was Ed Koch in New York. Oh. So talking the 80s, okay? So that should tell you how old I am. <laughs> so I'm sitting on my father's lap and he has two pieces of paper on either side of me and two pencils. And in the time frame that Ed Koch was on the TV screen, my father duplicated his image identically two times with both hands. And from the moment that he did that, I had the bug, and I just had to be an artist. <laughs> wow, man, that's you know? pretty cool. That's yeah. a cool story, man. Yeah, it's true. So, what is like? What sort of art do you, you know, rely on more, like, you know, artistic realism, design? realism, realism, and um, I mean, you know, um, cart, uh, comic book art has always been my my safe haven, my escape, escape. from madness. So, Madness. yeah, you know what I mean? So whenever things got rough, comic books is where I went. And um, and uh, I picked up on all the artwork from there. And then from that, I wanted to branch off to being closer to real. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. cool. I mean, I can definitely see the comic book version right here. Animated oh, yeah. Joker, comic book right <laughs> here, The Killing Joke, Jack Nicholson. Right. Hang He's on. Legend. Okay. Oh my God. Caesar From, Romero. Caesar Romero. Caesar Romero. From Adam West Batman. Yes. And if you want to be technical, Mark, Mark Hamill. Hamill. Indeed. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to add other people, yeah. but my daughter Sierra advised against it, and I think she's right. I think that uh, nobody else deserves the mantle, but who's up there? Yeah, I mean, yeah. they did a great job as Joker, and it's, it's always hard to portray Joker because, first of all, different personalities and different comic book eras at the same time. Oh, yeah. Especially this guy. He's like Caesar Romero, season. do you know he refused? I, I don't know if you can tell. I don't know if you can see on your camera there, but I literally had to make sure you can see some whiskers. Because yes, he didn't Caesar, want to Ram it. Caesar Romero refused <laughs> to shave his mustache. So they put heavy white makeup over his mustache so that you could not see it during his portrayal of the Joker in the 66 show which is a great thing for trivia. So anybody that doesn't know, now you know. that That's why the whiskers are in my painting because you can see them clearly in the 60s show. Uh, I remember watching the Batman 66 show when I was a kid. Who's your favorite Joker? Mark Hamill. Me, mine too. Honestly, He's as sad. much as I love Heath Ledger and his live portrayal of him, Mark Hamill. When we go live, I have to say Jack. Good old Jack. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. Because, I mean, I love Tim Burton's style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, Nolan want to be realistic and realism, but right. I love Jack. Yeah. He's no, Jack, kid. everybody loves Jack. Jack is Who awesome. doesn't love Jack? I mean, I love, I'll put it this way, I watched Tim Burton's Batman because of Jack. Portrayal yeah, of the Joker. yeah, yeah. It's all the, he has the serious, silly, goofy, and then he goes, Serious, it, it's unpredictable. You don't know yeah, what he's doing. Yeah, absolutely. But he's Ledger. He's very just psychotic. I think the, I think the, the the interesting thing about the Joker and Batman mm -hmm. is that you have a psyche that you can play with. It can go. It can range from something comical, mm -hmm. something jokey, yeah. to something so serious and so deep that it can be sad exactly. to a point of sadness, right? And I think that Heath Ledger found a way to mix the two, yeah, you know what I mean? Whereas Jack, really, basically, he took his, took his um, portrayal of the Joker from The Killing Joke. Yeah, yeah, he did, pretty much. But with that, enough about the Jokers. Exactly. We don't want to talk about the Jokers. <laughs> so now, what is 
the art that really made very passionate about. Because I know you showed me one with the Batman and he's little. Legend. He's legend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, the, the only reason why I wanted to bring that one up is because um, I, I, I couldn't afford campus back then. Oh. Um, and that's why being in culture exchange is a, is a very important thing because they get it. They get what it is to be an artist that just has to get it out. Like there's artwork on the walls that I'm not talking about hanging. We literally paint on the walls yeah. and the floor because we just have to paint when we're in here. And that was the feeling I was having on the way home one day. And I couldn't afford a canvas big enough to do the interrogation scene from The Dark Knight. Uh -huh. And I saw that someone threw out a dresser. I ran in the house and got a butter knife. And I popped the, the back, the, the plywood, off the back of the dresser uh -huh. and brought it in the house. And I sketched the interrogation scene and uh -huh. painted it, right? So I painted that. And my wife convinced me. My wife, the wise knight, wise spirit, she convinced me to put it into a Love Marvelous, Marvelous Gallery, downtown Kissimmee. Okay, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but we put it in the window, it was there for two days. Right? It sold. $500. Wow. Staple holes and all, it sold. Right? Dang. To a dentist. So the guy calls me and he's like, come down and get your check. It's $500. I think it was like a $20 commission I owed him, 20% commission I owed him. And he's like, I got your check ready for you. Just come down here. And I went to go pick it up and I got in the car and it didn't hit me until I sat in the car and I looked at the check and I saw the date on the check that the date was my father's birthday. The guy that taught me how to draw and it was his birthday that I sold my first painting. So, and I sold it from the back of a dresser. So, you know, all the canvas work that I'm doing now and, and all the gallery stuff in the world, doesn't matter. That was the biggest do what you're doing and keep it going that I could get from anyone because I knew it came from him. So that was kind of cool. That was my first painting ever sold. I sold it for maybe, I think it was $500 and I had to split it with the guy. Right. But it was, it was the most money I made at that time from something that I did on the back of a dress. Wow. Yeah, man. Do you have any other paintings you want to show real quick? Um, we have Ultron here. I did um, the Ultron painting here. And um, basically, I, I just wanted to enter this, um, the first Coscom show that we had here right. at the Fashion Square Mall. It was ran by my friend uh, Jermaine Lemus and Bernard Cruz. Okay. We did the first, I don't know if you were here. You were here for that one. The you met me that day. 2014? Yes, that's okay. when I had the glass table back yes. then piece outside. Oh, well, that's man. that's exactly when, um, the first nice. Coscom show that we did here, I wanted to enter uh, a villain uh, piece into this gallery because we had a separate thing. We had the cosplay thing going on. Oh, yeah. And then we had the separate villains gallery going on here, which right. we still have going on now, actually. That's why these pieces are here for okay. the villain gallery now from the cosplay that we just had. Okay. And um, so I, I rushed this piece just to be in that as far as the art thing, right? Right. And then I got here and I did the cosplay thing. And I mean, you know, when you first cosplay, let this be known. When you're grown and you first cosplay, you feel kind of silly. But when you see two or three kids run up to you and their eyes widen up and you realize you made somebody's day, that's it, man. It's done. That's, that's, that's what we're here for. So it was pretty cool. And we just finished one February 25th, and I'm pretty sure we're going to be doing it annually. Okay. What is the next event? Do you have any idea of time? Uh, actually, right now, the villain show is the one that we have up now. Uh, I know... We have a Wonder Woman show coming up. Not a Wonder Woman show, a Wonder Show coming up. Anything that's space involved. And there's gonna be a segment just for Wonder Woman in here. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, so it's gonna be everything that's, that, that has anything to do with um, space or background of space. We're gonna have that. But Wonder Woman's gonna have her own section in here in honor of her movie coming out soon. And, oh, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Guys, you heard it. Eric Wise, aka The Wise Knight. Hey man. Thank you guys for watching. Peace Culture out. Exchange crew, German Lemus, Bernard Cruz. Two shout outs. Come through here, man. All live artists, all original work. You won't get what you see here duplicated again. We do it now. 
can't duplicate it later. <laughs> thank you. You got it, man. Right. Thank you, man. And thank you, Becca. <laughs> <laughs>